Welcome, comrades and fat capitalists. In my first uh, episode of my tutorial for the uh, realistic mode in Workers and Resources Soviet Republic, I assumed that everybody knew how to make a base camp. But watching some more videos, I actually never saw a, a nice layout or a tutorial how to do that. So I started making my own. Um, the base camp, or actually in realistic mode, you need to collect everything from the custom house that we all know. Um, but how do you do that efficiently? Uh, I see a lot of videos where people build up to uh, like five construction offices and seven distribution offices and, and they bring in like a hundred vehicles or so. And that is uh, a kind of overkill. Uh, mostly they, they cut out one or two game years to skip that uh, to skip that part well I'm trying a different approach and that is what you'll see here In the uh, realistic mode, uh, you use uh, in the starting phase all the free storages, all the free aggregate storages, all the free construction offices and distribution offices. Uh, the first part is uh, about acquiring materials from the uh, custom house, and in that way, um, you um, don't do not have to wait, do not have like eight dumpers waiting for the custom house, but you have them waiting for the gravel yard. In that way you enhance the capacity of the custom house uh, where gravel and uh, I don't mean gravel, I mean concrete and asphalt will still be needed uh, to acquire from the custom house because there's no way to store asphalt or concrete. That is uh, logical but a lot of people have kept asking questions about that, uh, the, of those storages. They are not in the game. The, the game starts creating uh, its own uh, automated uh, names for, for cities. Um, I like to use this little trick where I just place a little uh, uh, substation so it generates the name of the city and then I delete the substation so it's at a convenient place. Another question is why do I actually do this? Why do I bring in materials into the map? Why not start just at the custom house? That would be a much easier approach. No problem, no distribution. But um, in order to get any industry running, you'll need to be close to open water. Uh, so sewage can be dumped. Um, and uh, yeah, you can't could place your industry way far off the the custom house and then transport but yeah I just have mud roads at the moment so uh, the time for that is uh, too long so my idea is I set up a, a like a border town place some uh, small industries there which will start generating some income and when that is done I can yeah go into the map and start producing my own uh, asphalt and concrete because another thing is why not go way into the map? Yeah, I need to be close to the custom house or relatively close. So uh, concrete and asphalt can be gathered because I have no way to store that. I've seen some forums and questions uh, about the game. Where, where can I store asphalt and concrete? Well, you cannot. Just think about it for a minute. I start uh, here at a point where uh, the construction site is going to be and the first electric substation about 600 meters uh, from the water. Well, 
well, the next time you're uh, watching a video uh, on uh, workers and resources by somebody else, I would like to ask you to check their custom house. I always look uh, for footage where the custom house is being shown and then I'm looking at how long the line is of cars and trucks waiting uh, before the custom house. Sometimes it's up to 12, which is ridiculous. That's just a traffic jam and that will not speed up the process in any way. So I'm uh, orchestrating my vehicles, at least at the beginning, but also later when I do constructions, uh, because I've divided them in teams for roads and, and buildings, I can actually, um, uh, how do you say, quite well direct what kind of vehicles will be standing at the custom house in, in what order and in what uh, frequency. And uh, by that, um, yeah, having less waiting time at the construction uh, a custom ha house and in that way less waiting times for my construction projects. You'll see how this works later. Uh, another way of looking at the efficiency of a setup is also uh, by uh, seeing how many vehicles are waiting at the at the uh, offices. So how many vehicles are standing idle at the construction offices or idle at the distribution offices. It's not that they have to do everything all at the time, but yeah, when there's a big project happening, most of them should be moving, or at least that's my idea. The more vehicles move at different locations and not in each other's way, the more efficient the building will be built. And in realistic mode, that is uh, quite a time saver. Well, with this uh, setup, you st could start building anything uh, from uh, big, uh, big uh, industrial complexes to uh, your first house. But uh, I will start with utilities. Mm -hmm. 